Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to my channel where I like to talk about games and game design. And today, I want to talk to you about uh, different types of texture files that you might run across when you're building your game. Specifically, these textures can really add that extra little bit of detail or uh, pop to the models that you're using. Now, in a lot of cases, models that you get for use in games will already have these textures built in uh, to the material itself, but I think it's good to know what these different textures do to the material um, in case something breaks and you have to put the, the material back together. Now I'll be using the Godot game engine for this example, but any physically based rendering type of program uh, should be able to use a lot of these options. So the textures that I'll be using are exported from materials I found from the Material Maker website. Material Maker is a free tool, but if you export from Material Maker, you do get an actual material to use in your game engine of choice. For this video, I've opted to just use the textures that it exports, and I'm going to set them out myself within Godot just to show you what the different textures do, just as an example as we go. So for the rest of this video, we're going to hop into Godot, and I'm going to go through some examples in the form of basically making a very quick house made out of simple shape primitives that I've just thrown together within Godot. And we're going to start with uh, the typical brick wall, and a brick is a the common first example used for showing off the, the benefits that these textures can have. And then as a bonus, at the end of the process where I show you the examples of how these materials are these texture files are used, I will point out kind of some of the things that are wrong with the scene that I've set up. Uh, more so just kind of as an example to show you what might be going wrong in terms of trying to get things looking realistic. So that being said, let's hop into Godot so I can show you what these texture files do. So here we are in Godot. And as you can see in this scene, we have here a white house. Um, I have a camera set up. This is what it looks like. These are just the basic mesh shapes in Godot that I've assembled to form a house. If we take a closer look at the house scene, here you can see I have it broken up into walls, windows, door, and the roof. Um, I have a couple of lights on the inside, um, just so we can see lighting effects uh, on the ground. So let's get started into texturing. Uh, let's start with the wall. As you can see, it's just a the default mesh instance cube that has been deformed to be a rectangle. Um, let's add a light to the scene now, just so you can see some of the effects of the different textures as we go. And so the first type of texture file that we'll look at uh, is the one that you're probably the most familiar with, which is the albedo. Uh, and this just changes the color of the object. And you can see as we move the light around that there's no additional shadows coming on. Any shadows that we see here are just part of the texture, so they're just different colors of the object. While this looks better than just the plain white wall, um, it's not as far as we can push it, push the visuals of this object. So next, uh, and we'll do these in isolation so you have a better idea of what they do. Um, let's get rid of the albedo, and then let's go move on to the normals. Uh, so the normals have a handy section here. If we activate it and then add the brick normal texture to it, you can see that it looks like a painted brick wall. So the way this works is that normals are used in the calculation for light. Um, and because this normal map, these RGB values represent the um, perpendicular of the surface, which gives us this nice texture. Now, we can go further with this. We don't have to just rely on the normal map. There's also something called the depth map. So if we add the depth map here, now in Godot, it seems the depth map only works if you have a normal map as well. You can see that it actually looks like the bricks are popping out of the surface, or rather, popping into the surface. And so the depth map adds a little bit of extra depth to the texture. So it looks like the bricks are actually um, offset further from the grout around them. So that brings us to the last file that I'd like to talk about. Uh, in our case, it's the ORM, uh, which stands for Occlusion, as in Ambient Occlusion, Roughness, and Metallic. So if we look at these settings in uh, the spatial material, all three of them only require one float value between 0 and 1, which means that we can pack all of this information, these three different maps, together into the different color channels of an image file. In this case, ORM corresponds to RGB. So ambient occlusion is stored in the red color channel, roughness in the green, and metallic in blue. And you can see in the spatial material itself, when you add the image file, you can choose which of the different uh, channels that Godot looks at to read from. 
And if we set these all up, you can see that it makes it look a lot more realistic. Like there's differences in uh, not just lighting and color, but also smoothness and roughness and reflective. And there we go. So another fun thing that we can do uh, with Godot's default spatial material is something called triplanar mapping. The best way to think about this is to imagine a projector along each axis pointing at the object. Uh, just projecting um, projecting the material at the object. On a flat surface, like a rectangle here, you won't actually notice too much of a difference. But if we add a sphere into the scene, you can see what happens here. The texture is kind of mixed together along the where the corners would be on a cube. And you can adjust this a little bit with the curve underneath here. By turning it up, you can sharpen the edges a little bit so it doesn't bleed over, bleed across quite as much. I will caution against turning this too high because it does uh, some extra math on the back end that may, might slow your program down, but you can tweak it based on your game's needs. All right, go back to the house scene and there we have our brick walls in. Uh, next, let's work on the windows. For these ones, I don't have any textures although I probably should for some smears or scratches on the windows themselves. So we'll just make it the default spatial material, turn on the transparency, select the color, turn up the metallic, turn down the roughness. There we go, we have a passable window. Save that, and now for the roof. So the roof will just go through the same steps as we did with the the walls, except I'll just add all of the different elements together um, instead of showing off what they do individually. And here's the final house uh, that I've created. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to break down a couple of reasons why I, I think don't that think is. it looks particularly good, so that you have something to consider when you're going about trying to improve the look of your game. So, number one, let's start with the ground. The obvious thing here is that it doesn't go all the way to the horizon, and you can clearly see where it stops. So the texture on the ground is way too large for what it is. Um, and it, it is that way because if it was smaller, like to the size that I think looked correct, you'd very easily be able to make out a pattern because that's what our brains do. They are very good at picking out pattern. Now, the second thing beyond the ground is that there's a weird combination of uh, realistic and stylized textures going on and they don't really work well together. If you're going for a realistic look, details are very important because anything that looks slightly off will draw your eye and distract you uh, almost immediately. Think of like the uncanny valley effect when humanoid faces aren't quite human and it makes us feel a little weird and creeped out. Um, it's not quite as bad as that but it is similar in effect. And three, it's just a very empty scene. There's not really much else going on here. If we were to add a couple of other decorations, like a backdrop to hide the horizon line or some plants or grass to, to hide the fact that the ground is tiling, 
with a smaller texture, that would go a long way to fixing the issues with the scene. And that's it for this video. Uh, so hopefully you've seen the power of these different types of texture files. Um, and if you've made it this far in the video, it would be a great help if you could hit the like button down below. Uh, maybe leave a comment what you thought and consider subscribing if you want to see more content about games and game design. So that's it for me for now. Uh, take care of yourself.